Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for the ACAW for this uh, third time reunions. Um, and I'm going to talk about the uh, four of my uh, installation project. Uh, actually, is a site-specific project. And so three of, of them is already done, and uh, one still in the process, which is, will be uh, finished by early April in Kyoto, Japan. Um, let me see here. Uh, the first one is uh, Wall of Sky. I've done starting in uh, 2015, uh, and in Beijing was the first version. And this one I'm showing you is the uh, one is done in Shanghai Biennale in 2016 to 2017. Um, but before I start, I quickly just want to say that why I choose site specific as the name. It was changed the original name, and I was thinking about a site specific because. Uh, there is now specific and specific differences. There's work including in a specific site, meaning that the site has a cultural, uh, the uh, context of the cultural uh, symbols and also uh, whether archeological site or temples or city uh, monuments. And to me, this is something that ought to be uh, considered to, uh, to the entire site, meaning for the site. And the noun site, I think, is more a refer to the in museum space in the white cube space, which you will implement the idea, but however, it's the uh, uh, it's kind of a fictional space and also space as exists is non-fictional to me. Uh, so you find the kind of possibility and bring into the uh, uh, look through, examine the condition and bring into a phenomenological experience and then other other. Uh, possibilities from different entities uh, to uh, uh, formulate the, uh, the, the uh, procedure and ideas. Uh, so this work uh, initially was uh, in the largest space in power station in Shanghai. Um, so when I did this piece, actually, I first of all does wanted to actually, only thing is the white space with the light from the side. Although you can see from the view and, and from the sides, uh, of in distance, the, the cityscape. Um, but to me, the light space is essential kind of a quality. Uh, it really evokes your uh, visual sensu uh, the kind of essentially qualities. Uh, so what I actually did uh, was did some visual calculation. The stack form you see that is the, uh, the geometries and the kind of a parabolic kind of a shape. But the whole idea is to make the space alive, the space that it has the dynamics and fruities and, and really actually can really bring the view into the space that is not in the one place but is constantly engaged with the entire uh, sort of a perceptive experience. And the material that I use, I just quickly, because as you will see from the, uh, um, the time lapse of uh, the piece, how it constructed, um, the material that I use is the um, Surface of this is the in the front was the use ink, uh, several hundred bottles of ink, which is painted on the Chinese painting papers, which is penetratable. Uh, the ink can form the way almost in a way like a material uh, as agencies in the way how it forms and penetrates the paper and cast form underneath and the really kind of a bring into the way not only based on the phenomenological. Uh, possibility, but then also has this material um, formations that we refer to geographic formations and fractal geometries and the uh, the macro views of the uh, uh, the uh, um, sort of bio organism structures and uh, you can really actually zoom into macro views and the macro view at the same time and also same notion that the pigment to me is the light how can the materiality is turning to light particles, that particle can permeate the room, which is uh, really uh, uh, sets the, all the light reflections by working on the, by uh, using the uh, reflective floors and build the reflective ceiling. Uh, entire wall is a slanted wall, which is uh, uh, nothing sets a straight. As you walk in, you try to balance yourself in a way, visually. 
uh, but you, the, really the idea is really tricks you to walk through the space that is seen from different angles, experience a different uh, perceived way, and it's, it's always in a constant flow rather than uh, in a fixed views. And this is the entrance. Uh, build constructed with a white uh, scrim. Um, as you see that, even the, 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 the kind of introductory kind of uh, entrance is from the angular views. Um, oh, here we go. Yeah. So this is a, took a whole month to build the entire uh, installation pieces uh, in the power station in Shanghai Biennale. Uh, so you see that because this is a space has to build inside of the space and everything's in the angular views, ways, and front structures with the top is 35 LED light in different temperatures. Um, there's a side entrance, uh, which is where the view walks in. You, you saw the uh, entrance I did. Uh, and the entire structure is kind of almost like parabolic forms, and the walls is all slanted. Uh, so you're walking actually constantly in the visual adjustment in the way you, how you're viewing from the high views looking up and also looking from plain view, but also you can get very close and, and back. So this is a whole entire installation that may, makes you uh, actually uh, really in the motion of, uh, of uh, sort of accessible to any views and, and, and really it generates yourself actually a part of the space in the pieces. Um, these are the ink that is crystallized in a way that has a really uh, sort of has this kind of a you know causalities that sort of brings all the uh, notion of different references. This is a piece that uh, is called Walking Penumbra in Beijing, which I tried to make the space has no boundaries, and so what I did was with a curved entire edge and made the entire piece into kind of a shadowless, but also pro program the lights on the top. Uh, the piece itself um, has a suspended two rooms uh, made about a four meter tall panel of the mesh. So the, some meshes over layers, but two space that is I call chambers that are connected by cable tight the uh, surface of layers of a scrim. Uh, which is sets in the virtual kind of a parabolic space. That the light from the two holes on top was the two projectors diagonally across the projected video image, really about the natural world, how the formation of the materials, and uh, that actually light, really the image is actual lights and action in the layers, and then uh, as the light particles go through the layers of the uh, mesh. Uh, really create a space that really blur the boundary between inside and outside, and also match really enable your possibility of engaging that uh, the uh, uh, the uh, once you move and actual the the uh, the materials moves. Um, these are some of the uh, pieces in the room in the views in the room. Uh, the next one uh, is, I could quickly run through because the time is getting short. Uh, this is the one that is uh, another site-specific space what I meant. It's in actually uh, downtown Chicago at uh, the Mart of Chicago. It's the public art which is used uh, a projected image. And so it uh, really is bringing the historical buildings, the 2.5 acre surface into the live uh, and so in contrast to the, all the modern skyscrape. So I strategically, so this is the way I uh, use it at 1.2 Rumen's projections divided into three sections. Uh, but really I wanted to, this is the projectors we're setting. Uh, it's, uh, this is a mock-up, which is idea of how to use the, uh, how to consider the space that give it a scale feel. And so uh, the whole video which is re-edited to fits into idea of verticality as an open space and, and how regenerates that as facade into living uh, image arrays. And these are the 
these are the blood cells running through the biological uh, imageries of the pieces. Um, so move on to this one is the current one that I'm working on. Uh, this is in a permanent uh, installations in life space in the 12th century is Japanese uh, Zen gardens called Kenyanji. Uh, so the garden I was found actually very interesting because I spend almost the once every uh, two months is spending time there over the year almost, and really observe the space how they're situated that situated in, in a kind of a geoman geomanic setting, which is for uh, one of a uh, third space is facing to the inner gardens structures, which are purely geometry and structures, and the rest of four of a third is facing to this um, the setting of the natures and the gardens, and then also the movement of the sun. Uh, but what I observed that um, there is the climate change that essentially this, the garden seasons uh, became so, uh, it became very obvious in, in from the trace of the uh, climate change. So uh, for instance, the recent storms affected the gardens, entire structures, dry, uh, drought caused the garden uh, layer is sort of dying and try to re-acclimate, the, the, the re sort of acclimating the uh, uh, climate and, and layers of moss, it became really kind of in a different kind of uh, 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 colors and, and it's, it's sort of the trace of the, became the new form of from the violent and unpredictable, unpredictable sort of weathers. Uh, so this is the space, uh, center space and then symmetrical is in the both side. Uh, the, I'm doing the uh, front of the facade in terms I'm sorry, I still get used to that. So yeah, this is the uh, side room look, which is open to the garden. And what I had, my first impression was when you're in it, you think about the outside of space. You really sense this once all the panel is closed, this space is completely silent in a steel, in a sleeping mood. Once you open it, it breathe it through, and the entire space became alive. And so, so my kind of approach is not only in dealing with the light, but in bringing the light qualities, because all the roof extends to the, uh, the, the width that the sun will only come into the edge of the porch. And so the, it brings the room is evenly, actually you can easily observe how we observe the uh, and, and the, uh, the, uh, the viewers from the gardens. And so this section is the one component I call the one entities. And then the next section, this is the one facing out the garden. And you can see the dry that was uh, doing the, uh, actually September's. Um, this is outside of, around the room, there's the porch area. And this is the other side, it's called Tokonoma space, which I uh, re-change this space, which is usually traditional scroll and with the flower range. So it's parallel to the garden next to it. And this is the other side, which is facing to the, the other uh, geometry structures in the gardens. So I did a different kind of approach. So each component has a different entities. And this one I'm showing here, it has a pit, has a containing the water. So water reflects a roof line. Once wind breathes and its entire wave of water surface become the abstract sort of natural phenomenological uh, rhythms, which I will bring that image into the Tokonoma space, uh, rebuilt in the video uh, LED panels in this uh, uh, redesigned Tokonoma space. So these are the continuation of the geometry line on that side of this site, um, so which I sort of using it in different way of, uh, of uh, dividing four sections for the bring all together as entire totality of the, uh, the uh, sort of experience uh, to this uh, garden space. Yeah, so this is the mesh that I created. Use the mesh uh, to sort of uh, bring the layers of views and the reflective panels in the distance, reflect the sky and you can see through the gardens. And so the mesh has something always fascinates me and because you can see through it's breathable, uh, that where you see this uh, black sort of cloud-like is actually is the, let me go walk through this. 
the actually is the all the cell mutations, the, the micro uh, sort of grown, the microorganism that has uh, uh, really shows the how it regenerates it in life cycles. And to me, not only the life space in the phenomenological experience, but then also see how material evolves and how the the external world and the object and relationship uh, that uh, connects to the viewers. Uh, we are as part of this ecosystem. And this is a layer of a moss changing the colors, which is a very different than the usual. And that's the drawing from the group that I did a workshop, experimenting and examining the, how the pattern affect the entire growth. And then so this their tracing paper used in my workshop and then giving me some uh, really uh, um, more understanding at the Anthropocene kind of a point of view, how things change in the natures. Um, let me skip this. And this is the center space that is, has a Buddha statue behind and created layers. This is a much more reflected the inner world and the rest of it with the... So this is the last scene I wanted to show you is how the cell grow, uh, destroy, and then regenerate in a dye. And those patterns will be used in, in a part of the scrim. So these are the frog egg get blended into liquid, and then a few seconds later, it regenerates itself, refined its, the nucleus cells uh, regenerative process uh, in this material kind of a, a, a resembles the kind of material regenerative kind of a, a energies. And lastly, this is a tokonoma space that I use uh, for creating the LED panels and looking at the sky views. And then the landscape on the side that we're tuning in a different distance caused as parallel views. And the light frame, I drop into the perspective into the meditation kind of a height where you sit on the uh, ground that you see in the eye views. Um, and lastly is the, this is the how the wind breathes on the water. Views that, that image was zooming as a pattern of this volatility uh, caused by winds it will be reflected on the uh, Tokonoma space, the inside, it's live. Anyway, sorry, Just, I'm done.